Hello and good morning. How is everybody doing? Happy Saturday. Thanks for joining. So today I thought I'd do something slightly different. The last times I was just using Visual Studio Code and the terminal and I wrote my own test cases and ran my own code. Um, I was going to go a step simpler today and just use leadcode, leadcode.com and pick a problem from here. The big advantage is I don't have to make the test cases. Um, if you run this, so if we run this now, oh, okay, this doesn't even compile, and it's the wrong language. All right, if we run this in JavaScript, it should already tell us um, what the input is. So this input is given to us by the website, which is kind of nice if you don't have to worry about your unit cases. Have you used any websites like Leadcom or HackerRank? Yeah, HackerRank is another one I know, leadcode.com. Um, but there's a few of them and the base functionality is free. Um, it's kind of fun to do stuff, you don't have to worry about the unit tests. So when you run it, it runs with one test case and when you submit it, I think it should run with multiple test cases. All right, okay. So the problem that we're doing today, oh, by the way, is my audio and everything okay? Um, I had this joint stream with Kristen on Thursday, which was a lot of fun. If you want to know how to put, how to send ASCII text to the Google Cloud Vision API and then use ML to have the computer or the API read the ASCII text for you, um, that was a cool stream to watch. There should be, there's a recording here. Yeah, let me know in the chat if there's issues with the audio, if this screen is half cut off. So the problem I want to do today is the number of islands. I think this is a good interview question for an internship or somebody junior, or if you do a part two to this problem or some other parts, this is good for a typical whiteboard interview. All right. So here's the problem. I wonder if you can read that well. Oops, wrong button. This one here. All right. Given a 2D grid map of ones and zeros, where one means land and zero means water, count the number of islands. An island is surrounded by water and is formed by connecting adjacent lands horizontally or vertically. You may assume all four edges of the grid are surrounded by water. Okay, so we have a 2D grid, ones and zeros, ones mean land, and we want to figure out how many islands there are. So here's an example. So there's this island that has this weird shape that's like an upside down U almost. You see that? So they're all vertically, horizontally connected, so there's one island in this map. And then in this example, there's one rectangular map in a left upper corner. Then there is one map consisting of just one land tile. And then there is another map, another island consisting of these two ones. So there's three islands on this map. Okay, does that make sense? All right. Hi, Gwyneth. Oh, you're German. <laughs> Everything's good. Which part of Germany are you from? Or do you just know some German? I guess in Germany it's 5 p.m. now, so it's a pre-dinner stream. <laughs> oh, Berlin. Yeah, oh, Berlin's a lot of fun. It's a cool city. Uh, hi, bad hombres. Uh, yes, an island is only an island if it's top, bottom, left, and right are clear. Diagonal doesn't count exactly. So that's why it says here connecting adjacent lands horizontally or vertically. So diagonally, they are not connected. So these three islands, even though they all touch diagonally, they're considered separate islands. I guess you could change the problem statement and solve it where you say, oh, diagonally also counts, but this one is given as only horizontal and vertically. Okay, so, and we don't need to see this at the moment. Okay, I don't know where this exclamation mark, let's ignore it. 
Okay, so they are saying the input that we're given is the grid and it comes as characters, I guess ones and zeros, a 2D grid. And we're supposed to return a number. And then the backend here will use the test input, run the num islands function, giving us this kind of input and it will assume that what we return, um, hi Ur, how's it going? That we return the number. So we shouldn't console log the number, we have to return it for the backend here to evaluate the test correctly. Okay, so how do we do this? Um, so, First of all, we can start with the number, and once we compute it, we want to return this number. Now, what do we need to do here? Um, I think we have to step through the whole grid and count everything that we've seen and check the neighbors Yep, so I think what I want to do is I want to go um, row by row from top to bottom. And if I find a piece of land, I will mark it as visited. And then I want to go recursively in all four directions. So um, top, bottom, left, right, I want to go recursively in all four directions and see if it's connected to anything and also if it's connected to something I've already seen. Yeah, let's try to do that. So, I guess we need that. I'm wondering, does it matter if this is the height or the width? I guess it doesn't really matter. That's up to us. We're given a 2D thing, um, but let's assume it's the height and the width is grid of zero dot length and if if grid the length we have to handle this edge case here if we're given an empty grid then there's no islands on it so we can return zero so now we've checked that we have at least one row in it so we can take the length of that row and we have a height and a width of our grid. Okay, so now I want to step through the whole grid, I think. So for const row of grid or const character of row. So now we're going through every character. Let me just think here if the naming makes sense. So I'm getting a row of the grid, which means grid at length is height. Yes, that makes sense. Now for every row, uh, for every letter, if C is equal to one, uh, it's hard to tell if those characters, if they are numbers or if they are strings. Let's do it like that. If it is equal to one, then we want to increase the number of islands. Oh, and I want to mark this one as visited, so I think I can't work with the with this kind of for loop. So let's do for let four four, no, let i equals zero, i is less than height i plus plus, and for let j is equal zero, j is less than the width j plus plus, and then our character is the Good. It's the grid of i j. Those two day things always get me. Um, 
Okay, so if we're first doing the eye less than the height, yep, that should work. Now, if that character is equal to one, we want to increase the number of visited ones and we want to set grid of ij's equal to how should we mark something that's visited let's just mark it as a plus and i think now we need to recursively look at all the neighbors so now we need to visit the neighbors Do -do 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 -do. Um, so now we do a visit function and we give it i minus one j and the grid and so on. So we go up, down, left and right. Almost. And we have to implement this visit function. Now oh, I'm missing my VS Code shortcuts here. Maybe I should switch to VS Code just because it's a little nicer to work in a real editor. Okay, so I want to go recursively to all the neighbors and also mark them as visited. So let's write this visit function um, var visit is a function that takes a i, a j, and a grid and we do need these numbers, we need the height and the width, so if i is less than zero or if i is equal to the height, we can't do anything. Similarly, if j is too small or if j is too big, and if we are still within the range, then we want to say grid of i j is visited. Oh, I know we need to visit all of those. Oh, thank you. Yeah, my function name has a typo. Thanks, Kaisi. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna write into the grid everything that I've already counted. So when I encounter this first one here, I will recursively go down and mark everything as we already counted this island. Um, and then I can go through and then only need to count the ones that are new. And I think I just copied and pasted too much code. So this visit function of an ij marks it and then visits the neighbors. So instead of marking it and then visiting the four neighbors, I think we can just do it like this. Hi, Shady3TV, how's it going? All right, what do we think of this? So we have a height, if we have an empty grid, we just return zero, um, there's nothing to do, and we have a width, and then we go through the whole 2D thing. Um, I don't like this extra C here. And if we find an island, a piece of land that we haven't visited yet, so if that piece of land is equal to one, then we increase the count and now we visit ij on this grid. 
um, and anything we visit we mark as already visited and then we visit left, right, top, bottom and if we are out of bounds we don't do anything. Okay, should I run this? Oh no. What is wrong with function ij grid? Oh, maybe you're not allowed to write before the comment. Did I misspell function? Not quite sure I see what's wrong with function. Oh, okay. Sorry, never mind. I should have looked at this arrow right away. I can expand it to notice that. Oh, no, I don't have any space left. All right, so maximum call stack size exceeded. Okay, yes, because what are we doing here? So we are visiting everything and that's not okay. I'm like marking everything as a plus. I don't want to do that. Uh, there's a a check missing whether something is equal to one. So if you find a one, then you mark it and visit it. And so that's what's missing here. So now we're visiting the next one. And if the grid is not equal to one, then we can return right away, right? Because it's either already visited or it's water. And in both cases, we don't want to venture out from there. Yes, okay. So for this first input, output is one, expected is one. All right, let's submit that. Okay. Few seconds ago, runtime error. <laughs> oh, this is weird that that gives us an error. Because this is exactly the input from the test case where everything ran fine. So I wonder if it has to do with the global variables or something? Move stuff around. Okay, yeah, yeah. So this is um, that's one of the problems with these sites. Sometimes they're a little iffy about where you have to put stuff. Um, but that one got accepted. Cool. And one thing you can see here, I thought you could see here, is how fast you are. Details. Yeah. So I think we're doing pretty well here with our answer. We're in the faster than 90% of all the other test cases. All right, so yeah, that was a good problem for recursion. And I wonder if we, should we try to solve this without recursion and use a queue instead or should we do a different problem?